Well, dear viewers, uh, we will be discussing problem-based learning. And uh, uh, as a student of medical education, uh, it's quite uh, uh, obvious that uh, people are mostly reluctant to uh, problem-based learning. Uh, but it's very really interesting. Uh, so this is the objective of uh, today's presentation, that at the end of this presentation, students of uh, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, or any other allied health profession like where medical sciences or Master in Public Health programs will be able to uh, describe the PBL, I mean problem-based learning, and the process of uh, problem-based uh, learning session, you see. So this is the uh, composition of uh, problem-based learning using that as a strategy. So first, there is a scribe. You see, and this person who knows, takes the notes, this is called a scribe, and he he records the notes and the events being discussed. Remember, this is some discussion. If this is the table, so you are sitting around the table, you see. Um, among this table, these are students and participants. So, 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 so what is important? Important to understand is that there is something put uh, as an agenda on the table, and uh, this this uh, something something on the table you see is being brought by the by the by the by the tutor. You see, this is important. The tutor only intervenes when chair cannot control. So first, this is scribe. Second, this is chair. And remember, this is from the students. This is from the students, and a very interesting um, point is that the students are also the participants. So these three are the main actor persons. If I, if I draw it here for you, uh, around the table, you see what will happen. So one is here, the two is here, and of course, the third mean the students. These are the students, you see. These are the participants. So very interesting, uh, this is that uh, uh, scribe will write the take the notes, and then uh, the chair is going to regulate, and chair is also from the students. This is very important. He will not only facilitate, but would also control the process of the problem-based learning. Remember, problem-based learning is used as a strategy. It is used as a learning strategy, and uh, it's very uh, dynamic, and let the uh, chair should be very much, very much a dynamic person, student, to, to regulate the whole process, but it's not only and the chair, but uh, the scribe should be quite uh, competent to record all notes being uh, going on in shape of discussion, uh, something that is put on the table, you see. So, so important is that in case of PBL, uh, what is important, uh, the role of tutor as well. So if I drive for you tutor, so tutor, here is a chair, you see, and the tutor is sitting here, you see, and he is just observer. This is very important. So the tutor is here sitting on the chair. And remember, this tutor is here from outside from the students. But he is, he is a keen observer. And he only intervenes when, 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 when the chair is not able to control the session. So thus, thus, thus tutor is just like a moderator. And, 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 and it's all going on. So you see, when the student discuss and describes something, very important point is that there is something on the agenda, on the table, and this something on the table which drives and brings these students to sit around the table is, or to go for the process of PBL is, is called as trigger, trigger point. This is trigger, and this is called as trigger of the PBL, trigger of PBL, problem-based learning. So trigger of PBL, something being brought by the tutor, put on the table is, it can be either an electrocardiogram, it can be either a particular theme like uh, acute abdomen in case of surgery, discipline of surgery, or uh, it can be what you can say, um, mm -hmm, acute morphine poisoning like in case of pharmacology students and pharmacy students. It may be uh, like uh, uh, during the manufacturing processes uh, of tablet manufacturing, uh, caping is one of the tableting uh, disorder. When the pharmacists are going to synthesize the uh, tablets, uh, prepares rather the tablets and the pharmaceutical industry, 
and keeping or elimination is one of the manufacturing process error. So then, 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 then it can be discussed. So remember, uh, the trigger of the PBL is is in fact the driving force, but these triggers shall be from the from the from the curriculum, and it should be curriculum driven as well. This is very technical point. It shall not be out of the curriculum. If it's out of the curriculum, then why you are going to use this PBL? Now, having said that, uh, uh, the element of self-directed learning as strategy is also there. Remember, the students go, and this will be clear once we will move to the next slide. Is the process of PBL. So, so uh, small group discussion is also there. Small group discussion. Remember, because it is a small group, PBL uh, is a small group, and a very important point is since discussion is going on, so SGD is also is one of the is one of the tool for 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 the PBL. And a very important point is that self-directed learning is is a is is very is very important. Sometimes the student, the teacher may direct you like in other conventional uh, learning strategy like lecturing or task-based learning or team-based learning and then you are directed to go and see this. This is called directed self-learning. And the direction is from the teacher, from the tutor. Here the tutor is just only the moderator and he's not going to intervene in this whole process. He's sitting outside this, 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 the students. This is students arena at the table and and the chair and then the second is you see the scribe the chair and of course the participant are the students so usually in this group uh, 10 to 12 students should not be more than that because it's very difficult for the moderator to regulate that or the chair to regulate that uh, uh, this is the process of pbl very important and what important is in the process of pbl that uh, first you have to identify the problem because the problem is being put uh, forward uh, on the table, on the table, on the table, uh, here, here, uh, in shape of the trigger of the PBL. It is being forwarded here, as I refer to. If the students, for the students of the of the physiology, you see that they understand the normal physiology, so of uh, cardiac my sites and then a normal single lead electrocardiogram. You see. And then, then, then there's a P wave, and then the Q wave, and the R, and the S wave, and then the T wave. You see, so here is T inversion. You see, and why the T inversion uh, wave is so, 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 so the teacher may keep uh, a, a, a piece of electrocardiogram, whether that is recorded either in single lead. Or as first lead, lead two, lead three, or chest lead, or three quarter lead, whatever the case is. But the point is that 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 the trigger is being put forward and sit, and then then the student comes and sit together, and then they perform uh, some 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 task. But the most important is that they clarify the terms and the concept being presented as a trigger here. For example, if it is related to the study of normal electrocardiogram. And uh, if the students being recalled of the normal electrocardiogram, so let me draw for you a single lead normal electrocardiogram and that I'm going here to the green wave and then the Q wave and then the R wave and then the S wave and then the T wave, you see. So if this green is the normal electrocardiogram and the student knows it, so then 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 they will come to know us, of course, that the student has been put forward a case of the T wave inversion. And when uh, they have been told about that how the T-wave inversion happens in a single normal electrocardiogram lead, so it may be due to digoxin poisoning, or it may be due to due to due to due to electrolyte imbalances. You see whatever the case is, but uh, 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 the matter is that what 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 wh how this this normal electrocardiogram is being placed in the curriculum, uh, at which precise in which at precise subject or at which particular level. The student is being taught. So, so if 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 they have to be taught to be to be to be to be taught the inversion of T wave. You see, this is called inversion of T wave. So then they must know there's the green line as electrocardiogram, normal electrocardiogram. Then they must know the normal electrocardiogram, and then the student will be able to compare this inversion of T wave and the causes of this. So, first clarify the terms and concepts. These are the these are the events uh, which usually. Uh, presented the problem here as an inversion of T-wave, 
And then the comprehensive, remember the student discussed this in perspective of the normal electrocardiogram. And these, from step one to step five, you see, uh, this is very important. Define the problem and then analyze the problem then, and then draw a systematic inventory of the explanation and, inf and inferred from step number three. This is important. This is important. Once you analyze the problem, you see, and the student discussed that in perspective of normal electrocardiogram and they analyze and they read that this is inversion of T wave. So then they maybe they may, then they may formulate the learning objective. Remember, learning objectives or learning outcomes are being settled here. So PBL is usually taken in two in two steps. One is when the student go and they perform personal studies, and these are called self-directed learning. You see, this this is how the student perform this. And once they self-study, but they, still, they will self-study on what? On these objectives being set here, remember. And once these objectives are set or settled already, in perspective of reading the normal electrocardiogram here in the green line, you see. And the objective of the tutor is if to tell them about the inversion of T-wave, then they will decide that, that, that what is inversion of T-wave and what are the causes of T-wave. So the student will then go and then study it. First, they will do their own study. And once they study, and then they will come and sit again, remember. So usually the process of PBL is happening in two stages. This is stage one, and this is stage two. Or So the process of PBL contains two. And this, this is, and remember, this personal study is very important. And this is self-directed learning. So, so in PBL, uh, you determine the self-learning uh, self objectives. And for, and for determining the self-learning objective, uh, let me recall you that I have already uh, a video audio tape recorded for the for the for the setting an objective and a setting an objective should be smart specific measurable achievable and time table and of course I had already given an example that if there are two surgeons and one is performing appendectomy and the other is performing appendectomy so remember in surgeon two is take much more time uh, for example, then the speculated period of time, then surgeon two is not smart as compared to surgeon one who accomplishes the study in, within the within the specified period of time. Remember, these are learning domains. We have cognition. The second is related to skill, and skills means psychomotor domain, and affective domain is the third learning domain, and this relates to the affectation. Affectation, you see, and this is very important. You may have a very good uh, person, a very good competent doctor, you see. Who is very strong in knowledge in the cognitive domain, who is very strong in skills in the psychomotor domain, and if we are having failed to give them and to inculcate in them the affective domain, so it means that we have been failed to, to, to make them an ethical a person who, who will practice within the perspective of ethics and as a human being. So so these three learning domains are very important. For, for either profession, whether that is medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, and even across across the uh, all all type, whether that is directly the engineering department or as the case may be. So, once you will be setting your objectives, this is very important. Once you will be setting your objectives, as I refer to uh, here, so these learning objectives shall be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, and timetabled. And remember no matter you are going to perform which particular type of study um, method that is whether you are going to accomplish that to the PBL or to the self-directed learning or directed self-learning but your objective should be smart but in case of PBL is the first session and this first session is usually uh, of, of, of step one to step five till you settle your objectives and remember the students are doing all these objectives because they are already uh, around the table, they, they have sit around the table. Remember, they are around the table here, and the tutor is here outside. So, something on the agenda is the problem of people, and here is the inversion of TL. So, then the student go and they perform self study. And once they make self study, then they sit on the next session. And the ne in the next session, they are going to share what they have learned it. And remember, this sharing may be through the group discussion, through uh, presentation, but the better is to do that to the presentation. Uh, and remember, the tutor again, the what you can say, the chair again uh, has to has to the chair again has to uh, take a leading role, and the scribe will write again take the note again, 
The scribe will take the notes again, and the tutor is sitting outside. He is not going to moderate. He will only and only moderate when they are going out of the curriculum domain or curriculum frameworks, which is not a domain of this lecture. So curriculum framework, if they are going outside the curriculum framework, then then the tutor will intervene, remember. So, so and then they will synthesize and test and the newly acquired information. Remember this phase, the seventh step is very important. Once the students learn this in shape of an additional information, then they sit together in the session two and if the objective was inversion of TVL, so let the tutor shall be uh, of the opinion and assure, rest assured that they have synthesized the problem and they have reached the conclusion that they have learned what was meant for them, what was settled in their learning objective. But the point is, it's not only to synthesize, we have to assess that as well. And how that is assessed, you have to test that. And this test may be true through, through, through the formative assessment as well. This may be to the formative assessment as well. So remember, so TBL problem-based learning is, is a very uh, uh, viable and fertile method, but it requires facilities and it requires some, 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 some skill, human resource to get through that. I hope now you understand what is the process of PBL, what are the stages of PBL and how PBL is very important and it in, in, in it in it in, in, in it embraces the self-directed learning strategies as well, and where the students uh, are going to uh, settle for them the and formulate for them the learning objectives or learning outcomes. So what is the importance? And the importance of PBL is problem-based learning is that the students become uh, expressive. They become uh, very what you can say. Uh, mm, the, their expression powers increase and they are interactive, and this is the need of the time, that your students should be productive, interactive, so that they have, they can settle their objective and then they can achieve it. I hope now you understand the process of PBL and PBL. Thank you.